think about it. Um, this is not the first time I've, I've uh, had interactions on Women's Day, and, and I think one thing that we men miss is the ability to bring life into this world. Only women can bring life, uh, which is why, uh, if, if you've been following what's happening, the Zeitgeist, India, Pakistan, uh, Abhinandan, uh, I've learned more about Abhinandan the mother than I've learned about him. Uh, that's really what our society is all about. Uh, you ladies are uh, workers, you work, you're professionals, you're also mothers. Uh, so what I want to talk about is, is it more difficult being a woman in your work life? When I say work life, I just don't mean your professional life. Uh, what do you do at home? Uh, I want to talk about your partners, how they contribute. Um, because a lot of my kids, when I interview them, I ask them, what do your parents do? They say, my dad's a businessman, he's a doctor, he's an engineer. And when I say, what does your mother do? They quiet down and say, oh, she's only a housewife. And I have to tell them that, I'm sorry, your mother works harder than your father does. Uh, absolutely. Do you guys agree? Anybody here? <laughs> OK. All right. So <laughs> let, me, let me start with Meghna, because I know more about it. OK, let's. let's go. I'll start myself. I'll talk about my mother. Mere paas ma hai. Shanti. Mike bhi hai. Uh, Shanti. So tell me a little bit about uh, your journey, and then we want to specifically talk about what impediments you face as a woman. Uh, so, hello, can you hear me? Thank you, firstly, for having me. It's nice to be here and chat about I'm a big this. Big fan of your films, I've told you. Thank you so you. much. That's so kind of you. Although there are just two of them, <laughs> it feels good. So the journey has been actually uh, great so far. Touch wood. Um, I've only worked with amazing people who have only nurtured and allowed me to grow. So that's been a great uh, you know, learning because obviously there's going to be trouble and there's going to be uh, roadblocks everywhere. But I think if you're focused and if you have the right people backing you, that can be fantastic. So my partners are great. We all have the same set of ethics. We may obviously disagree on a lot of things, which is healthy. But our uh, sense, our value system is the same. Our core is the same. So then it doesn't matter. And we, we all believe that you need a great work-life balance. Otherwise, it can go crazy. Otherwise, there's no life, really. Because it's each that drives the other for me. I need my work as well to feel uh, that I'm doing something else as well for my own thing. It's not for anything else. I love going to work. I love when even after my child, I was happy to come back to work. And when I go home, I'm, I, I'm cherishing that time as well because I'm trying to balance. There's no such thing that balance exists, but I'm trying. OK, um, <clears throat> a blunt question. Have yeah. you ever had somebody mansplain to you? Sorry, what? Mansplain, man explaining. No. I will tell you, huh. I'm a man. Oh, no, 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 never, never. I've never had that, actually. Well, you're lucky. I'm okay. very lucky. I'm very, very lucky. Obviously, there was one incident, I remember. Uh, my partner is Atul Kazbeker, who's also very, very supportive. And there was an incident where I think one of our team uh, members was spoken badly to. He personally called that person in front of all of us and said, I'm going to really, really take you down. You cannot. This is just no way to behave. So that w code of conduct has been with us from day one. We've never, even if someone's spoken badly to me or a team member, it's never taken lightly. We've always replied very sternly, and it comes from the top. It's not just like, hey, I didn't like wh what you did. It's it's very, very a strongly worded email or a legal letter or anything that means an authority has called up and said, listen, it's not OK, so we don't want to work with you again. So we've taken that stand very, very clearly. So I, no, I've been very lucky. I've not faced this at all, actually. So, so your company officially has a policy? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, and I want Meghna to talk about that in a bit. But Meghna, tell us about your journey. Uh, when I first met you, I didn't know, but you were pregnant. Since then, you had two kids. Yeah. Well, yes. you have three. Whistling Woods is your yeah, oldest first baby. baby. Yeah, my kids are quite jealous of me when I say that. How can you say that? Um, so, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's been quite an amazing journey. And I think one of the things that I have really, really learned to um, appreciate is actually the men in my life. Because when I got pregnant, Whistling Woods was just about a year old. And at that point, uh, there was a little worry that, you know, um, because I was having an institute, it was a new school, how was I going to manage? Uh, and uh, I had to assure everyone that, you know what, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be one of those women who works till their ninth month and, and, and you know, sh so I think that determination within me made it happen. I was working till a week before I delivered. And um, 
And then the question to come back, I mean, I, I know a lot of you, you are college kids and you may not relate to me very well, but the, uh, the hardest part of a woman getting back to her career or to her job is after she has the baby, uh, that separation anxiety. It's not just from the child, it's from us as well. Um, three, four months of just living, breathing, seeing that baby and nurturing for it, uh, you just are so nervous to get back. And uh, one of the things I have to thank my organization for is that they literally bullied me into coming back into work. Um, my husband works with me, which made it so much easier for me to take a maternity break without any stress that somebody was going to take over my job, because that's what would happen otherwise. Um, and he also then came back home every night and said, please come back, I can't handle this. <laughs> so that made me feel good, because I felt, okay, maybe I need to go back, because he's really I having think he a... still feels the same He's way. really having a, um, you know... Um, stress, uh, stressful time. Um, my father, who, um, first time I came back after three months, second time I was trying to take a longer maternity. That time six months wasn't official. Uh, he literally bullied me into coming back. He said, what are you doing? It's been four months, you have to come back. Um, I know if he was just my boss, it would be probably harassment <laughs> for, for bringing me back to work, but because he was my father, it was, it was all right. Um, but I think if he hadn't done that, I would have probably, it would have been much harder for me to come back. So first of all, um, men at work, um, or just leadership at work, it could be women, uh, men or women who are in the leadership positions need to be very empathetic towards uh, towards women, I feel. Um, yeah, equality, but they need to really understand what it takes to come back to work. I have a, a senior colleague at work right now, who and I spend the whole morning motivating her to come back to work, um, and she is uh, taking a break, and I can, I can feel her anxieties. And uh, the great thing is that because I've been through it, I've been able to really encourage her to come back giving her the assurance that, you know what, it's okay, you can, you can work from home, you can do part-time. And one of the things she said to me just this morning was that, you know, I know I have your support and I know you're great, but, you know, people look, people watch you when you leave early. You know, people in the organization judge you that, oh, why is she leaving at five just because she has the mom card? And I said to her that, you know what, I felt that as well. Being the boss, I felt that. But I just became immune to it because uh, at the end of the day, how many working hours do we dedicate? actually dedicate. And I've found women who are working uh, with kids at home are actually more, I don't know what it is, maybe guilt, maybe just passion or whatever, they want to give 120% of those six hours or seven hours that they spend at work. Um, so I feel that women are, uh, if you give them that encouragement to be able to work from home or whatever, they will actually give back more to the, to the, to the company than uh, men who are working 12 hours a day. Uh, so, um, I think leadership is very important, which is what I, in my journey, I would say that that really worked for me. Well, uh, talking about leadership, uh, you bring up some very valid points. Um, Whistling Woods is an organization, uh, the first one I worked at, where there are more women than men. Uh, and it comes from the top. Yours also? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And it comes from the top, uh, and as I said, you know, uh, uh, all of you guys out there experienced working for a woman once, and you realize why. Uh, the wars are not fought on this planet by, by women, they're fought by men. Um, what make now, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, why we have more women, uh, and uh, is it because of your empathy, understanding what, goes, what a woman goes through? Uh, you know, the, the, the radical policies you put in place, uh, you know, maternity leave, having a crash at work. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about what you've personally done to empower the women on our campus. So one that whenever we've interviewed for a position, we've never made that distinction whether we want to. I mean, I know companies that do that, that okay, if I'm handling, I have a hiring a head of accounts, it must be I'm, a man. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop you, Amita. Yeah. I don't think that you consciously sit and say, she's got estrogen, he's got testosterone, let's take her. <laughs> but I think what happens is that when you interview or when they talk to other people, they get the sense that women are respected here. This is a good place to work. Perhaps they get more encouraged than other places. And, and I also am quite sensitive towards the men in my organization because a couple of times that we've had Women's Day celebrations, the first few years, Mr. Somnath Sen here stood up and said, what about Men's Day celebrations? So I we said, don't get roses. Come up, with the day, <laughs> come up with the day. So after that, I don't know if you noticed, but we started giving chocolates to men as well. <laughs> and we said whether you eat it up or you take it for your wife or sister or mom, but you know what, you should celebrate this day as well. So um, I, personally, whenever I have addressed 
my organization, staff, faculty. I've always spoken about life-work balance, but I've always said the life-work balance applies for men as well. I feel very strongly that if men uh, do spend some more time at home, women can then actually spend more time at work as well. So that balance in today's day and age, uh, when both husband and wife are working, it's important that men as well find that balance. So we have, I know you look at women bringing their kids to work, but we have a lot of men who bring their I kids. Did, yeah, I mean, he brings his son, but we have a lot of men bringing their kids um, at work. One of the, my favorite examples about our crèche is that when I uh, was, um, uh, when I was, uh, when I just had my kids, I brought my kids from day one, okay, from the time I started, I was feeding them, breastfeeding them at work, and I used to bring them up, and they had a room. I started feeling like there were other women who were pregnant, and I started encouraging them to bring their babies at work, and they had different sorts of problems, like, um, they said to me, ma'am, you know, we come by train, and how do we bring a small baby in, tr in the train? It's so much easier to just, you know, kind of um, leave the milk at home and, and leave them with our mom or mother-in-law. So I understood whatever works for them. Uh, but then I, ha I had an opportunity for another female colleague of mine who wanted to use the crash. And I said, great, we did it up. Um, you know, put everything out there. Um, a couple of weeks, no, so, sorry, the, the day she started, with her daughter came her husband. <laughs>
there is no one. Absolutely no boys in the film industry working as an actor. There is Shashank Khaitan who is working as a director now, but he's not an actor. Pavel, uh, yeah, Pavel. I completely forgot about him. Neha. Neha, is she acting full time? I don't know. So I don't know. Like I'm, I'm not in touch with them, so I have no idea what they are doing. Gaurav Akash. Gaurav and Akash. Yeah. Akash is doing a. Akash is doing a. <laughs> no, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. But I'm just saying, look at the ratio again. Amongst the girls, it's it's only Neha and me, and amongst the boys, it's like about five people. But it's also taken them that long. Uh, also, I don't know whether. Uh, Gaurav is not really doing mainstream, so I had no idea about what Gaurav was doing. Marathi mainstream. Yeah, so I didn't, like, the thing is that I'm, I'm not aware of that space and that world. So, uh, and Pavel, I think he's doing a couple of things. I have no idea what he's doing, but uh, there are, these people, there are very handful is what I'm trying to say. I was sitting on that table and there were like at least six, seven boys who were not doing anything and had gone back to Papa's business. So it really takes a lot of perseverance to keep pushing, keep pushing, accepting rejection on a daily basis, uh, on to, in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of uh, who you are, what have you done? Are you still going to audition despite the fact that you've spent 15 years in the film industry and you know what you're doing and you know you've done so much work? Even today I get calls where they say you have to test for that part. And I'm just like, okay, I understand that it's a big production house, which is of some work, then I do audition for that. So the struggle is the struggle is going to keep happening and there's absolutely no way out. And it's never that you I was recently part of a web show and uh, mine and my, my actor, my co-actor's role is the same. We were paired opposite, uh, opposite each other and uh, it just happened to be that, you know, there was a conversation going on and suddenly somebody spoke about, uh, you know, what the contracts are like. And my contract and his contract was exactly the same except for the pay. And I was just getting a few lakhs lesser than him, it wasn't too much. But I was like, why am I getting paid less than this guy, you know? And it was really weird because I was like, aren't we doing the same thing? And it, I didn't realize it till I started speaking to a lot of female counterparts. And then they started realizing, I think it's been a realization over a period of conversations and a period of time that you go like, okay, you know, we're all doing the same job, we're all doing the same show, but we all are getting paid in like unequally. And you spend good, more, um, do you spend more on makeup? Okay, sorry. You spend more time. Yeah, and I am called what are Correct. extra for hair and makeup. So if I'm, yeah, so you know what? If my contract uh, says, if their contract says 12 hours, those guys turn up at 9 p.m. for a 9 p.m. shift. But I turn up at 8, uh, sorry, uh, 9 a.m. But I turn up at 8 a.m. for a 9 a.m. shift, you know, because I go like, then the channel will just be like, oh, but you need one hour extra for hair and makeup. But I'm like, but I have hair and makeup to do. <laughs> Unless you want me to just come like out of bed, like the way I look, I'm happy to do that, you know. But this is not what... Uh, so, you know, yeah, so I'm just saying that the change here is very positive because I know in the 80s and 90s, it was about, uh, it was accepted. 
You know, even somebody like Sri Devi would accept that she would get paid less than Jitendra. You know, that was just accepted and it was okay. Today, the fact that women are realizing and women are making, I mean, people, people like her who make films like Nirja and Tumhari Sulu and make over 100 CR, I know, but you're not bringing it up enough. Hundred, you know, 100 crore movies like Razi, okay, but yeah. close, yeah. Um, you know, and make such an impact with a woman at, at the helm of the film is just so amazing. So I feel like women like her can make that difference because when you hire those women actresses, you make sure that you pay them the same as the men. Having said that. <laughs> Thanks for watching Indian Eyes 24 News. Please do subscribe our channel. Press the bell icon for future notifications. Click on the like button. Must do share the link. Thank you.